in front of me, I have every single architecture software and I'm going to rank them from the worst to the best. I have tried all of these software for over three years and to find out which ones you really need and not waste time on useless ones, watch this video all the way through the end. So let's get started with the OG. So we have AutoCAD here. It is still very good for beginners. I think it's great to kind of have an idea of what each line means in architecture drawings rather than having everything automated, but it just isn't as efficient as other software. So for this reason, I'm just going to put it at the meh category. So next up, ArchiCAD. I think ArchiCAD is a great use case for BIM work and it has a great amount of features that are useful in the daily routines of architects. It's not that complicated and it's actually the first architecture software that I myself used. However, one thing that kind of holds back ArchiCAD is that it doesn't have as much popularity amongst some regions of the world, so it kind of makes collaboration harder on worldwide projects. And sometimes it's even hard to find some kind of specific objects for BIM libraries and all of that. But overall, I'm just going to put it at the good category because it just doesn't make the whole collaboration workflow with other studios in the world that easy. So next up, we have Revit. So Revit is great. Um, it has all the features that ArcCAD has. However, one big advantage is that it has compatibility with other Autodesk software. And unlike ArchiCAD, it is used almost in every single part of the world. It is a lot more popular. It's much easier to collaborate with other architects if you're actually using Revit. So Revit for me is going to be at very good. So next up we have SketchUp. So SketchUp is just great. I absolutely love it. It is super easy to use. It has a free version and it has a free library of hundreds of thousands of objects for you free to use with just one click. And for my and in my opinion, one of the best workflows that has worked for me is to combine ArchiCAD with SketchUp. I actually do most of the raw work on ArchiCAD. So basically the walls, the windows, the doors, the slabs, the roofs and all that because it's just much faster to model there. But then when it's time to do furniture and detailing, I actually use SketchUp. It is compatible with almost every other architecture software and it has a free version. So for that reason, in my opinion, it's just going to be at the highest tier over here. So next up, we have Chief Architect. So this software falls around the same category of um, usability as these other ones. So it's basically mostly for 3D work and representation. However, I just feel that this software is a bit more complicated than it needs to. Um, you usually need to take a lot of steps to do just one simple function. So that doesn't really make it for me. Plus, I just think the biggest market that actually uses Chief Architect is in the US. So you're not going to find a lot of usage of it in Europe or Australia or even some other countries. But if you have some specific task that Chief Architect completes the best, then go ahead, use it. But in my opinion, everything that this software can do, Revit and ArchiCAD can do it much better and much faster. So. For this reason, from my experience, I'm just going to put it at the meh category. So next up, we have Rhino. So Rhino is just an amazing software. The way I see Rhino is that it's not super complicated for beginners to do some basic tasks. But if you really want to go advanced, you have the possibility to do so with like parametric modeling to create some amazing organic forms and shapes. However, I don't think every architect is going to need to do a lot of parametric design. So if we're just going to do some simple stuff, I think SketchUp is way better in that area so uh, for that reason i'm just gonna put rhino ed very good so next up we have 3ds max so if you watch my channel you probably know a lot about my opinion on 3ds max i definitely feel like it has a lot of very good features it is the holy grail of like 3d professionals however just like with rhino a lot of architects are not going to need all of those features unless you want to focus on 3d visualizations and kind of dedicate your career onto that part of the world and you're ready to invest a lot of time and money into a very powerful computer and a lot of time into um, kind of some complicated features then i wouldn't suggest 3ds max to you but considering the limitless capabilities that he has and the capability of a lot of 3d rendering software to be plugged into 3ds max i'm still gonna put it at the very good category so next up we have blender so i've got a lot of heat the last time that um, i actually ranked blender but it's totally fine because i still think the same thing about the software it is very good it is free however it is just not built and designed around what architects really need. I just don't think it is crafted on that direction and I don't think it will ever be. 
yes, you can create amazing renders, 3D models with Blender as an architect, but it's just not the most efficient way to do so. So just like last time, I'm just gonna put Blender at the Mac category. Next up, we have Vectorworks. So in my opinion, this software is very underused and very underestimated. It really doesn't lack anything other than its popularity. So I always take into, into consideration this, at least from my workflow, because I do collaborate with other architects and other firms all around the world. So it's very important for me to have a good workflow that fits with other firms as well. And you're just not gonna find that with Vectorworks, unfortunately. So for that reason, uh, I'm just gonna put it at the good category. So Twinmotion, uh, this software has gotten much better since the last time I actually ranked it. I've joined some Twinmotion communities online and I've seen some very good renders from uh, the Twinmotion user community. And uh, for that reason, this time around, Twinmotion is gonna be at the very good category. So next up we have Atlantis. Just please just delete this. I don't wanna talk about this. I'd rather use Minecraft to do any kind of rendering work. Octane Render. Um, I've seen some very good stuff with this software. Um, it does have very good quality, but is it architecture specific or is, does it fit the architect's workflow? I'm not sure about that. So however, the quality that it has, I still think that it puts it at the very good category. If you're ready to invest a lot more time into more detailed stuff and some technical areas of 3D rendering, then I think you can do absolutely amazing things with Octane Render. So Lumion, I have a mixed opinion on Lumion. So I have used it amongst all of these other software. It is good, it does have good quality. However, it just feels too slow for, the, for a real-time rendering engine and it just requires too much computing power for a rendering engine like Lumion. Um, so for this reason, I'm not a super enthusiast of using Lumion and uh, software that are real time, but are kind of slower than uh, the rest of the stuff we're going to go on to here later. So for that reason, I'm just going to put it at the good category. Something that usually takes eight hours to render out in Lumion like an animation can take like 30 minutes in other software from this list. So that's why I'm not a big fan of it. So Unreal Engine, just like a lot of the other software that you mentioned until now, it can be used for architecture and interior design work, but it is just not specialized in that field. The quality is great, especially for VR, but as an overall workflow, I'll just leave it at the good category as of now. I definitely think it needs a bit more time in the industry to kind of get adapted and used more. So Chaos Vantage. So this software is relatively new and it is a real time rendering software, which is always good. Uh, at least for me, it actually seems very promising. And I'm planning to soon upload a video about the software uh, where I go kind of in depth in the workflow and the quality that it provides. But as of now, it still has a lot to prove and to see how it holds itself amongst the other software. So I'm just gonna leave it at the good category, but maybe it moves up once I actually create some content around it. Next up, we have Microsoft Paint, straight to God tier, no questions about it. And then uh, we're gonna move on to Redshift. So I've seen some very good interior work done with Redshift. However, it seems more applicable or more used for um, rendering shots that are done for products or even just mainly furniture. So I'll just leave it at mess since it does not have a lot of usage in the architecture field. So V-Ray, uh, V-Ray is obviously awesome. It's one of the OGs in the architecture industry. It has always kept on improving and innovating. Even this latest update with the transition that it has from Enscape to V-Ray is just awesome workflow. In my opinion, the only fallback that it has is that it can be a bit too complicated for beginners and it takes too long to render. So only for those two reasons, I'm still gonna put it at very good, but um, also at the same time, it doesn't feel right to put V-Ray at the same level with Twinmotion and Octane ren Render. So maybe I'll just leave it somewhere between is this real and very good. And then Corona on the other hand, uh, I definitely feel like this is a better version in v of V-Ray in some instances. However, it is not compatible with uh, SketchUp, but I think it has kind of the same level of quality as V-Ray, but it is just much easier and not as technical. Uh, plus, I've, at least for my computer, it has had a bit faster rendering times than V-Ray. I'm not sure if that's usual for other viewers as well. So but for me, Corona Render is just straight up here at God tier. And then we have Enscape. So Enscape has been my favorite software for a long, long time. It just has the best time to quality ratio. And that is a fact. I don't think anyone can argue with that. There's no better software that has that amount of output with that little amount of effort. I use it for pretty much all of my projects and I 
even have a program where I teach you how to create realistic renders with Enscape in only 14 days. So if you want to learn more about that, click the first link in the description. But obviously for me, Enscape has always got to be at God tier. It just is a revolutionary software when it comes to rendering. Next up, we have Photoshop. So Photoshop is awesome as well. I just love the fact that you can do a lot of things much quicker in Photoshop and post reduction rather than in all of the software. Plus the new generative fill with AI has just changed the game completely in my opinion. So Photoshop has got to go at God tier as well. And then we have Illustrator. There's not much to say about Illustrator. It's very good for like diagrams and presentation boards and all of that. However, I just find that a lot of people um, have it and find it simpler to keep everything done in Photoshop. Um, and yeah, for that reason, I just gonna put it at very good. So here's what I recommend to you. I would recommend Revit for modeling and drafting. And then I would recommend SketchUp for more detailed modeling or interior modeling. Then I'll recommend you to use Enscape as a combination of these and then also do post-production with Photoshop. I just believe this combination is absolutely amazing. However, you can always consider to use ArchCAD instead of Revit as well. It doesn't make any difference. I even think that it has an advantage because the materials from ArchCAD automatically transform into materials in SketchUp when you're exporting for SketchUp. So if you want to see how I created this kitchen render, check out the video right here.